Finally, Excel has come up with checkboxes that you can simply add to your sheet without having to go through complex VPA or macros. Much simpler to use. Let's jump in and have a look how these can help you. Just a quick note that as of July 2024, web and mobile users do not have access to the checkboxes yet and only Excel 365 users do. So the first thing that you have to note is that if you're going to share these sheets or you're going to send them to someone else, then the user has to be on the same version. Now let's get started and have a look at our progress chart. We have a list of tasks on the left hand side and we have the different categories that we want to check and uncheck. The first thing to do is let's go ahead to the insert tab here. When we go to the insert tab and you can simply see under the controls you have a checkbox. When you click on it you'll find that the checkbox has come. Now how the logic of the checkboxes work is a true or false. So if you see up here, it says false. When you click into it, you notice that it becomes true. Now this then gives us a whole host of opportunities of how we can use this with formulas. Okay, so to easily remove it, you can just press delete once. And when you press delete once, notice what happens. It just unchecks the box at the first stage. When you press it again, you will then find that the box disappears. And now in earlier versions, what happened was it started to grey out. So that's no longer the case with the new rollout. Right, we have all the checkboxes and to get the checkboxes here, you can simply just drag them down to wherever you need them as you do with any other cells in Excel. Okay, so when we simply check them and uncheck them, the true and false appears. Now, if we highlight the full row so we can take the cells from here to here, you can press just the space bar and the space bar will allow you to check all the boxes in the range that you have selected. Unselect to just press the space bar again and it disappears. You create the percentage over here, just click into the cell. We're using a simple count if function. Now, if they are true, it's going to count it. And we are counting the full range as well so that we can have a factor of how many of the checkboxes have been ticked. So let's just follow this along here. Okay, now count if. So what we want to do is we want to select our range from C to E, count if, and the criteria is true. Okay, now true and false doesn't need to go into double quotes because it's a true and false, it's a Boolean value and the range, we close that. Okay, now let's see what we get here. We get 300%. We're just going to convert this back to a number so that you can see that actually is three. Now, if we uncheck this, that's two that are actually true. Now we're going to check that and now it's three. Now we go back here and what we want to do is we want to divide that by count A. Count A will simply count the total number of cells here so that we have something to divide it by. Okay, press OK. And now it's 0.75. The 0.75 will be converted to a percentage. Let's simply click that and we get a percentage. So that's the way to add a percentage here. Now, the way to get the conditional formatting is highlight this, go across to conditional formatting, and we can just use the data bars. So I'm gonna clear these just for now, okay? And now we're going to go across conditional formatting, data bars, and let's select green. Now, if you notice here at the 50% mark, you have a certain percentage that's clicked. And when you click to 100, it goes to the end. However, in the 75%, you can see that it is graded all the way across. So the way that we're going to fix this to make sure that 100% is the full cell and 75 is only three quarters of the cell is you go back into your conditional formatting, go to your manage rules, and inside your manage rules, we are going to edit the rule and when we edit the rule, you see that it detects it automatically in terms of what is the lowest and what is the highest. We are going to change this to number. So the number is zero when it's at zero percent and the number 
being a percentage goes to one. Now, if you do select the percentage over here, it doesn't really do the formula correctly because it doesn't really know that the number has to come up to one. So let's ignore that for now. You can't put 100 here. If you put 100, it goes all the way to the top. It's not the best way to do it. So one and one, press OK and press apply. And you notice that the percentage progress bar has come down to three quarters. Now, if we click into 100, it clicks all the way. And if we click to 50 or 25, you can see that the data bar is moving according to the cell size. Moving on to the status. Now, the status is very simple. It's just a an if function. So the way to do this is if we do equals if. Now, the logical test that I've used is if this cell equals 100%, we are going to type here done. Okay, and if it's not 100%, then if it's any other value, we are simply going to just type in in progress over here and we can just close that up let's change this okay and when we do that you can see that it's in progress now when we check everything you will see that it becomes done All right let's move on to the next step as you see when we're at 100 percent it highlights everything in green let's uncheck that and notice once again highlights everything in green and it also has a strike through in the actual task. Now we'll start from scratch and I'll show you how to do this. So click into your status here, and now we're gonna to go to conditional formatting and we are going to a new rule. The new rule is going to be based on a formula. Click onto this and we're simply going to type in when the cell here equals done, so we'll just type that in done. Then we're going to do a series of actions or formatting. Now here, if you want this formula to go down your column, then you need to remove the second dollar sign. Otherwise it's going to be fixed on that status only. Okay, now let's go to format. And when we want that, we want to strike through and we want it to be green. And let's just bold it over here. So this is what it's going to look like. Press OK. Now, when you notice this formula, all it's going to do is it's going to do it in this column. We want to make sure that we apply this to the full range. So we press OK for now. And now what we're going to do, you see that you have that. We're going to go back into our conditional formatting manage rules and when we're here you can actually see the box over here so right now it's applying just to h3 but we want it to apply to the full range so what we do is we just select onto that i'm just trying to move this out the way so you can see and we are going to just delete it here and we're going to select our full range where we want it to apply when it's done now press apply and see what happens to the first range here and there you go, press OK and it's done. Now, once we check the rest, it will also work automatically. Highlight these, spacebar, and there you have it. Now, just taking this to the next level, if you want to add a due date here, you can simply use the conditional formatting to check if the date is before today. So have a look at the formula right here. And the formula is if B3, is less than today's date then it's going to be highlighted in red so anything in the past is going to be red and then we can just have a look at our overdue status over here so once again if it's a hundred percent then it's done and we're going to nest in a formula that if b3 is less than today we're going to look at it as overdue and if it's not then we're going to mark it as in progress so this is just another way that you can use your checkboxes now, another way we can use checkboxes is to monitor an attendance like this. So we have employees here and we have the dates on the top. Okay, so we have a 
little sentence here where it says Alice Johnson missed one day this week. So when we uncheck that, you can see that it automatically changes as we move. Now the way to calculate is we check the days absent and we use a simple count if function. So we select our range, let's go count if, if our count, this is our range, let's count our range. Now we're going to count if they are false because that means that they did not attempt okay and that's two and then you can simply just drag down your formula here and how we made this is we are going to concatenate it if h3 is greater than zero so if there are any days absent then we're going to concatenate the name of the employee and we are going to type in missed h3 which is the number of days. Now, because this is an actual number, you can type in H3, but if you want to have text, you would have to put an and before and after. And we type in days, and that completes that if they miss days. Now, the second if statement is if the attendance is complete, then we're just going to mark it complete and we're not going to count it. So let's just select that and we select that and we have our attendance complete. So this is just another way that you can use your checkboxes. Once again, you can go across and if you have used conditional formatting, you can go and create a new rule and we can just simply do it from here. Let's say a text that contains complete will be green. So that way we can see whoever has completed their attendance, they are going to be in green. So that's just another way to use checkboxes. Now, when it comes to charts, it's always nice to be able to use your filters and be able to see the data according to the filters that you have selected. The way that we're going to do this is a little bit of a workaround. Now we have our original data set over here and we have a lookup table right here. The lookup table is nested with an X lookup as well as an if statement. And when we uncheck this, this tells you that there's nothing here. When you check it, it tells you there's something there. We're going to start to build up the formula from scratch. So this is what we do. We start with our lookup. Okay, our lookup is the month here. And we take our month right here and we take the electronics and we close that up. Now that's giving us a figure there regardless of any logic built with that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take it and drag it across two of the spaces here, which is Jan and Feb. Now, when we uncheck this, you will notice that January and February are still plotted because we have not built up the logic of the if. Now, once we start, let's go to if. Okay, now what we're looking for is, just let's just move this out of the way. We are looking for the logic here and we are going to look for the logic in this if it equals true. If it's true, then we're going to perform the XLOOKUP and if it's false, then we're going to do something else. Now, just for cleanness, I'm just going to put in here double quotes. The F1 has to be locked because we're going to drag this down. So F4, press OK. Now, once again, if it's not checked, you notice what happens. Let's just drag that down. OK. You'll see now that the blue line has appeared at the bottom. Now, once you click it, it's going to plot it. And once you uncheck, it's going to go down to the bottom. So appliances are also done in the same way. If we remove that, we're also going to have a line at the bottom. And when we uncheck clothing, then that's the last one that will come up. So the logic here is that we need to build in an NA. If we use the NA, then the line will completely disappear. So let's just check back our boxes, click into this. Now we just remove the double quotes, add NA and just double brackets here, open and close bracket, press OK. Now when we drag this down, let's just double click and drag it down. We'll uncheck electronics 
and notice how you don't have your data, your blue line here anymore. So that's just another way of how to use chart filters. Now I'll quickly show you the donut chart, which works in the same logic. However, a donut chart is quite nice because it updates the percentages as you move along as well. Just another way that you can use your checkboxes. Thank you for watching this video today. I hope that you've learned something new. And if you did, I would appreciate a like and subscribe. And until next time, happy spreadsheeting.